Hello everyone, today we're learning about land and water pollution that humans cause. For your objectives today, we're looking at um, explaining how human activities pollute the land and water. You need to be able to define bioaccumulation and explain what it is. And you need to be able to list the stages involved in a harmful algal bloom. Um, your quick task is to think back to lesson eight, B18.1, how was human waste managed back in medieval times? So write down the title, date and objectives, complete the quick task, pause the video of course, and then press play when you're ready to move on to the next slide. So back in medieval times, as you learned, London obviously was built on a river, as were most farms and villages and so forth, because people needed a source of running water. So in this image, you can see a typical uh, medieval village. There's a church in the middle, people's houses and homes. Um, in the distance, there's um, maybe the manor house. Here are the fields where farming and animal rearing will take place. Here's some more farming taking place over here. And of course, the um, all important running water. So the running water is important for washing, people also might use it for drinking water, and then further downstream is where they will dump waste if they need to get rid of things. So certainly um, human excrement, animal excrement will get dumped in the river and washed away. Now that's not an issue back in medieval times because there were so few people, but nowadays we are have such a massive population, we need um, sewer works and sewages to get rid of all of our waste. So what I'd like you to do is think about how we're currently polluting the earth, look at the uh, images, pause the video, you can either just think about it, write some bullet points, or if you're watching the video with someone, talk to them about it. So pause the video, complete this um, thought task, and then move on to the next slide when you're ready. Okay, so here are your answers. Firstly, pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers damage the land. And we use these for farming, but they can cause an issue. As we've already mentioned on the first slide, um, sewage. So nowadays we have sewage um, that goes through pipes and gets treated. We'll talk about that in a moment. And lastly, there's household waste and industrial waste. And these, um, these cause damage to the environment because they take up the land. Also, industrial waste can be a big issue if it's not treated properly. So firstly, let's look at sewage. When you flush your toilet or the water rinses away down your plug hole from the shower, um, what happens is all of that water goes um, through the pipes and goes to a sewage works. Now there can be all sorts in there, including cosmetics, cleaning substances, chemicals, and of course, human waste and excrement that you flush down the toilet. Now we can't just flush that out to sea or dump it in a field or something because um, then you could get really bad pollution. People could get infections or organ other organisms could be affected by microbes living in that um, waste. And of course, gut parasites could spread. So it has to be treated. Um, and this is what's happening in these tanks here. The, um, the sewage is being treated. Um, next, we'll look at landfill sites. So much of our household waste is not recyclable. Obviously, back in the medieval times and the other slide we looked at, they didn't have things like plastics or cans of coke. So they didn't have any landfill sites. So everything they had was natural and from the earth, or maybe they had paper and cloth to wrap things in. Now, the problem is that if we have non-recyclable household waste, that destroys natural habitats because we, we put them into landfill sites. And also, as these um, things here, as they break down, and decompose, they can um, release harmful chemicals into the soil. So the soil absorbs and soaks up all of those harmful chemicals and then can spread. So that's a real massive issue. Um, industrial chemical waste. So here we've got um, a, a commercial chemical factory it's making chemicals for industry or cosmetics or cleaning products, things like that. And uh, this is a nuclear power station and both of these produce dangerous waste. So toxic chemicals must be treated and disposed of carefully. Otherwise, the environment can suffer severe damage, killing organisms or destroying habitats. One point I would like to make is that actually nuclear power plants, when carefully managed, produce much less harmful waste than fossil fuels have since we started using them. So the amount of pollution and global warming and so forth that's been caused by fossil fuels is much, much worse than nuclear power. You might have heard of nuclear incidents um, where um, nuclear um, radi radioactive materials were allowed out into the um, environment. So there's Chernobyl and more recently Fukushima. Um, but those um, incidents are very few and far between. So, so long as it's handled properly and we don't let those radioactive chemicals out, Nuclear power is fairly safe. 
uh, what I'd like you to do is pause the video here and just write a summary of what you've learned so far by answering these quick questions. You can rewind the video if you want to and uh, review what you've learned to help you answer these questions. You could use Google or you could use your textbook to help you. So what I'd like you to do is write down how the environment is damaged by untreated sewage, landfill and industrial chemical waste. The next thing we're going to look at is the use of herbicides and pesticides. So herbicides, the word herb means like plant and icide means to kill them. So herbicide is a chemical that kills plants, like a weed killer, but it only kills the unwanted plants. It doesn't kill the crop that we're trying to grow. And pesticides, pests means small organisms that might eat your crop, for example, locusts or, or caterpillars, things like that. And aside again means to kill them off. So a pesticide kills small organisms that might eat your crop. In this image, we have a picture of oilseed rape, which is here. And that's the crop that we're trying to grow. That's where we get vegetable oil from. And at the edge of the field, you've got a little grass border and some hedgerows. And in the grass border and hedgerows, there'll be lots of wildlife living there. What I want you to do is pause the video and think about the questions. You can write bullet points, you can have a think or you can have a talk if you're watching the video with someone. And I'd like to think about what will happen to the wildlife if the hedge in the hedgerows and grass if the oilseed rape is sprayed by herbicides and pesticides. And what will happen if this if what if this happens over many years? So let's say that you know one year the farmer grows a crop, so they spray it with this stuff, they harvest a crop. Next year, they do it again. They spray herbicides and pesticides on, harvest the crop, and then do it again the following year. More and more spraying of herbicide and pesticides. So pause the video, answer the questions, and then we'll have a look at what the answers are together. Okay, so first of all, in the first instance, when herbicides and pesticides are sprayed, the wildlife in the grass borders and in the hedgerows could be damaged or killed because some of that pesticide is going to leak out of the crop. Some of it might get sprayed on there accidentally. Some of it might get washed out by rain. Over many years, the herbicides and pesticides can build up in the soil. So you get an accumulation of these chemicals in the soil of that field. And... As time goes by, these dangerous chemicals can build up in the food chains, and this is bioaccumulation. So that's the next key point we're going to learn about this lesson. So the word bioaccumulation, bio means living thing, and accumulation means something builds up or something collects. So you might want to get this key definition down. Bioaccumulation is when toxins build up at each stage of a food chain. The animals at the top of the food chain are affected most severely. So write that definition down, pause the video and then press play when you're ready to move on. This food pyramid is an example of bioaccumulation. So at the bottom here, we've got um, plant plankton. And plant plankton floats about in the water, photosynthesizing, making its own food. Then this is supposed to be an image of animal plankton. So animal plankton are also tiny little organisms that you can't see with the naked eye, like the plant plankton. And again, they just float around in the water and when they encounter some plant plankton, they gobble it up. Then we've got some small fish and a dolphin. As I'm sure you've already guessed, the yellow circles represent particles of dangerous chemicals. So let's say some dangerous chemicals get in the water and start to accumulate in some of the plant plankton. So, you know, some of them here are fine. These guys don't have any of the um, dangerous um, particles um, inside them, but some of them do. OK, so some of these organisms have um, got some dangerous particles inside their structures. What happens is, as they're eaten by the animal plankton, the animal plankton takes these dangerous particles into their um, structures and their bodies. Okay, So the plant, animal plankton has a higher concentration of these dangerous chemicals than the plant plankton. Next, we'll look at the small fish. You can see each of these have um, five or six parts of um, dangerous chemicals inside their body. So let's say this fish here has eaten one, two, three four, five, 
six um, particles of animal plankton, well now, as I've already mentioned, the dangerous chemicals have built up in their body. And last of all, we look at the dolphin. Let's say the dolphin eats all three of these fish. We can see that one dolphin contains all of these dangerous particles, whereas earlier, the plant plankton, not all of them even contained one. So that's how these um, dangerous chemicals build up in the food chains. What I'd like you to do is explain in your own words, and you can do a flowchart or bullet points or however you prefer to write it. I want you to explain what's happening in this diagram here. It's on page 289 in your AQA biology book, so if you are struggling a bit, you can use the um, biology book on Caboodle to help you form your answer, and I'll talk through the answer on the next slide. So I'm going to talk you through the sort of thing you might have written. So in the lake water, there is 0.02 parts per billion of a pesticide, which might have washed off from a nearby farm or a nearby field that's had the pesticide on it. When it's rained, it's washed into the water. Now, that's a very, very small amount, very, very weak. It's not concentrated at all. And you probably wouldn't notice that in the lake water. If an animal came along, a large animal, and drank some of that lake water, it probably wouldn't be affected because it's such a tiny, tiny amount. The problem is, is that the plants that live in that water all the time and photosynthesize are going to take in some of that water into their structures. So the small plant within its structure has one part per million of pesticide inside it. Now that small plant gets eaten by small fish. So if the small fish consumes two small plants, the small fish inside its body now has 2.2 parts per million of pesticide. So we can see the pesticide is starting to build up in the animals. Next, if the tiger fish eats three or four of these small fish and a cormorant eats maybe five or six of these small fish, then they're going to have the um, pesticide in their water, inside their body, sorry, at a concentration of five parts per million or ten parts per million. And these larger animals get eaten by the crocodile. And the crocodile eventually has 34 parts per million inside its body. Now that's actually co more concentrated. That's actually quite concentrated and it can be enough to start making animals ill, infertile or even kill them. So it has real disastrous effects on organisms and the biodiversity in an area. So the biodiversity will go down if animals start dying. The next main point for this lesson is all about algal blooms. So um, this, what's happened in this lake is you can't see the surface of the water because it's completely covered in green algae. Now you might think, oh, that's not a bad thing. Algae photosynthesize, they take in carbon from the atmosphere, they get rid of the carbon dioxide and then they release oxygen. So, you know, photosynthesis is good. But um, actually what happens is the other life in the um, lake or in the, the body of water is, is suffocated to death. Um, and I'll explain the stages of that next. I'm going to talk you through the stages of an algal bloom now. So first of all, we need a body of water. So let's say this is a lake. And this part is the um, soil. And the lake is like next to um, a farm. And it might be that there are crops growing here. Or it might be that there's also um, animals on the farm, so um, there might be like a cow. So I can't draw a cow, but here we go anyway. Happy cow! And here's its tail. Okay, sorry for the rubbish cow. Anyway, so what happens is, um, in the um, water there might be little fish, there might be some plants at the bottom and just general plant life and maybe a little bit of algae. Not too much, just a bit. OK, what happens is um, if there are fertilisers being used on this farm, so the crops are being sprayed by fertilisers, what can happen is the fertilisers can build up and wash into the um, lake. Um, and um, fertilisers contain a large amount of nitrates and minerals that plants need in order to grow. Um, another thing that might happen is if the cow does poos and that builds up and washes into the lake, again, that's, an, you know, normally we use um, animal waste as a fertiliser because, again, that contains a lot of minerals too. So either way, either from the overuse of fertilisers or from us farming too many animals and their waste going into the water, the water gets filled up with nitrates. 
Now these nitrates are used by the plants to grow and the fastest thing to grow is the algae. So what happens is the algae starts to grow and then there's too much algae and what happens is it blocks out the light. So the surface of the lake is completely covered by algae and there's no light getting to the bottom because the algae is taking all the sunlight using it for photosynthesis. And there's light hitting the water. But what that means is the plants at the bottom are now in darkness. So these plants die. When these plants die, they start to decay. And when we learned about decay and decomposition, we know that microbes, now we can't see them normally with the naked eye, but I'm going to just draw them as orange dots. Microbes, microorganisms such as bacteria, um, start to uh, break down the waste um, left behind by the matter that made up the plants so that the dead plants are being decomposed by bacteria and we start to get more bacteria growing um, in the um, water. The bacteria need to respire, they need um, oxygen and the water has some oxygen dissolved in it from the algae and also the plants that were in there used to produce oxygen. But now look, there's far too many bacteria. There's lots and lots of bacteria growing and they're using up all the oxygen, which means there's not enough oxygen for the small organisms that live in the pond, for example, pond snails, fish, little insects, and they all die too. So what you're left with is a lake that's got loads and loads of algae on the top and water that's full of microorganisms such as bacteria using up all the oxygen but no plant life left and no animal life left because they've all died okay so you've effectively got a dead body of water with nothing in it except bacteria and algae and that is what is called a harmful algal bloom sometimes algal blooms are okay because they don't get too big or the algae gets eaten by other organisms but if the ecosystem can't support it then everything dies apart from the algae and the microorganisms what I'd like you to do is have a read through these. Um, the um, sentences are not in the correct order apart from the first one. So this sentence is your starter sentence. So write this one down and then the rest of them, read through them carefully, try to put them in the right order and write them down. Pause the video while you do that. And here are your answers. So what happens first of all is that fertilizer or animal waste that's high in nitrates washes into the water. The algal growth increases because of all the additional nitrates. The increase in algae means light is blocked off for other plants in that body of water, so they die. Microorganisms that break down plant matter in the water increase in number and use all of the oxygen up. And lastly, the animals in the water don't have enough oxygen because microorganisms have used it all up and they die. So to finish off, what I'd like you to do at the bottom of your notes, write to revise in large capital letters. So write down to revise. Then I want you to list the main learning points from today's lesson. That means that when you look back at your um, book next year, when it's exam time, you'll know what you need to revise and review. So write to revise and make a bullet point of all the most important learning points you learned this lesson. Pause the video while you do that and press play when you're ready. To finish off with, I want you to assess yourself against the objectives as usual, look back to where you've written your objectives and draw a smiley, middle or sad face for your confidence level. Can you explain how human activities pollute the land and water? Can you define bioaccumulation and explain what it is? Can you list the stages involved in harmful algal bloom? And for any of those that you're underconfident with, you can do some further study. So the YouTube channels I always mention are Cogito, uh, Cognito, sorry, um, Primrose Kitten, uh, Free Science Lessons and the Amoeba Sisters. You could also look at the Caboodle book and the, the work for this page is on page 228 and 28, sorry, 288 and 289. And you could also use other websites such as BBC Bite Size, GCSE Pod and Seneca Learning. Thanks for your hard work today, guys, and I'll see you next lesson.